Welcome everybody. Today I'm going to give you a training, the technical training uh, that ARI normally gives to customers. Uh, I will first uh, present myself. I'm Sophie Redig. Uh, I will give the presentation, uh, but for example, if you would like to ask some technical questions, you would like to have some support or you would like to uh, perform some changes to the technical manuals or you have some ideas to improve the products, you can contact the ARI Water Treatment Technical Support Department. They will answer as soon as possible uh, to all your requests. Um, I will first explain something about our uh, product range. Uh, so we have three different ranges, two uh, different departments when we are active. It's the residential solutions, the commercial industrial solutions and the commercial hospitality. Uh, we have four ranges we uh, focus on. It's the IQ Soft, Softena, Slimline and Maxima. They are all proportional. Uh, if you don't know what proportional is, you can always contact your account manager for more information. We have the bigger systems, the one inch and the one and a half inch systems. It's a pro flow range for the commercial industrial solutions. And then we have the commercial hospitality, the H2 Optimo. It's for the hot water systems for everything from Horeca, kitchen, stuff like that. Uh, we have our residential solutions. I will mainly explain how this valve is working. So I will give you an overview of our uh, four main ranges. We have the IQSoft, it's a premium range. So it's the range with most features, most accessories, most of the options. Uh, then you have the Slimline and Softena. This is the family range, a bigger range. Uh, it's a mid range. Um, you have less options than a, a IQSoft, for example. Um, and then you have the start version, the basic range is the Maxima range. If you would like to have more information, please contact your account manager. I will start a technical training, so I will explain everything. How uh, is the ecosystem working and how is the Eco Plus system working? After this training, um, you will normally understand how the system is working, how the valve is working. Um, but if you have more questions, you can always contact the technical support. How is the summary? So the first part is a hydraulic valve body. So we will see the main components of a water softener. Then we will see the control valve. How is the water flowing through the valve? The solenoid valve, I will explain you how it's opening and closing. Some other components, the reliability of a valve. And then I will quickly uh, give you some information how I recommend to do an installation. Then we have part two. I will not present part two. Um, I will not explain the electronical part because we have some uh, movies uh, already from all the mu menus of uh, all the software of our uh, residential ranges or also the service manual where you can find all the links with the movies um, and, and more information. So the cabinet softener, how is it looking like? What are the main components? What is the most important? Of course, the most important is the resin that you are using. So you are using resin, that's the most important to soften your water. The valve is of course also very important because the valve is going to um, change your water flow and is going to make sure that your system is operating correctly. And you also have the electronic uh, to do the calculation, um, to control the volumetric capacity, stuff like this. The control valve, what are we going to explain about the control valve? So we will see the basic characteristics. We also will see the flow diagrams. It's very important to understand the flow diagrams correctly because if you would like to do a troubleshoot or if you want to, to know how the valve is really working, the flow diagrams are a very good tool to find uh, the issues. The service, so we will see service, the refill, the brine preparation, we will see how the system is going from service to regeneration and afterwards what is it doing during the regeneration, the brine draw, the slow rinse we will see and also the backwash and the fast rinse. So the basic characteristic, uh, characteristics, blah, 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 characteristics. Uh, how is uh, the valve working? It's a very easy valve and it's a uh, a piston so it's working based on a piston it's simply moving from the service position to the regeneration position when the system is idle it's in the service position 
we can simulate it by pressing here. So if we press here, we are going to move the valve into the regeneration position. So you have service, idle position and the regeneration position. That's actually the only thing that the valve is doing. So you see you have not a lot of moving parts and a very reliable valve. Uh, the solenoid, um, oh, maybe explain how it's moving from the one position to the other. It's the most important, of course. How is it moving from the service position to the regeneration position? It's changing, it's with water pressure. So the water pressure will uh, push your piston and your diaphragma into the regeneration position. I will explain some more with the flow diagrams and it will become more clear. Then we have uh, three solenoid valves. Um, so if you look at the valve, you will have a drain solenoid. You will also have a refill solenoid for the echo systems. And if you have an echo plus system, you will have a third solenoid. So normally for an echo system, you have two solenoids. And for an echo plus system, you have three solenoids. For the IQSoft, you always have three solenoids, but the backwash solenoid will only be used as a fast rinse and not for a backwash. So how is a water softener working? Um, we have the service position. So the hard water is entering your softener. It's going through your valve. It's coming in your tank. It's coming in contact with your resin. Through ion exchange, it's getting softened. Your softened water is going through your bottom distributor, through your riser tube, and it's going to the faucet. That's how a water softener is working. What is the advantage of the systems from ARI, all the proportional systems? We have a dry salt tank to prevent salt breaching. Um, so your salt will always, your dry, uh, your brine tank will always be dry. You will only have a little bit of water underneath your air check. How is the softening process working? How is the ion exchange working? Um, if you have resin, it's like millions of little balls. They look like this. They are programmed to remove calcium and magnesium because calcium and magnesium in the water is actually the hardness uh, that have to be removed to soften your water. So you have water, um, you have your resin that's loaded full of sodium and you have your water full of calcium and magnesium that is coming in contact with your resins. And then the ion exchange is going to start so he will exchange some sodium for calcium and magnesium and the water, all the hardness will be removed, but it will be water with some sodium that is going to the faucet. That's a softened water. After a while, you will see that the resin is full of calcium and magnesium. The system will not be able to, to do the ion exchange anymore and to soften the water to remove the calcium and the magnesium. And then it will be time to perform a regeneration. The regeneration, how is it working? So it's volume controlled. You always have a flow meter on the outlet. You have a flow meter to be able to control the volume of the customer. But we also have a days override, so the electronic can be programmed uh, with a days override. The ecosystems, it's a two cycle. Uh, the two cycles are brine draw and slow rings. The Eco Plus cycle, we call it the fourth cycle. You first do the backwash, afterwards you do the brine draw, the slow rinse and the fast rinse. The brine draw, it's counter current, so upflow. So here you see, normally the water is entering your tank, through iron exchange is getting softened and it's going to your faucet. Now it's in the opposite direction, so it's first going to enter your riser tube. That's why it's upflow, in the opposite position, upflow. The brine refill, it's time controlled, so your electronic will calculate based on your volumetric capacity, you will calculate how much time you have to fill the brine tank. It's filled first, so at the start of the regeneration, your brine tank will be uh, refilled. Then depending on the exhaustion of your resin bed, uh, for all Eco and Eco Plus systems, uh, it will depend on the exhaustion of your resin bed, how much he will fill the brine tank. And it's always with softened water. So here he will perform the refill and it's always with softened water. We will see more information later in the flow diagrams. 
We also, all the airy valves always have a hard water bypass. So here you see, during the entire regeneration, we have a hard water bypass. So the water is entering your, your valve and it's directly going to the outlet. So the customer will have untreated water during the entire regeneration. So the service position, this is a flow diagram. I will explain how the water is going through your valve to have a better understanding how it, it's working. So the hard water is entering your system, your valve. It's going through your valve, through your top distributor. It's coming in, in your tank, coming in contact with your resin. Through ion exchange, it's getting softened. Your softened water is going back to your riser tube, coming back into your valve and is going to the faucet. That's how the water is going through your valve. Here, it's important to understand that you have two different kinds of regeneration. You first have the pre-regeneration. It's very important to understand that the customer still have treated water at the outlet. So during the pre-regeneration, the customer will not notice that the regeneration is ongoing. He will still have treated water. It's only during the regeneration, when the regeneration will start, that the customer will have untreated water because of the hard water bypass in the valve and will have um, during, uh, hard water during the entire regeneration. Which uh, cycles are these? So during the refill and the brine preparation, the customer will still have treated water. It's only when the brine draw will start that the customer will have hard water and also during the slow rinse. For the Eco Plus system or for the IQSoft, you also have the pre-regeneration where the customer still have treated water and, but the regeneration will be longer. So during the pre-regeneration, you will have the refill and the brine preparation. But first, for the Eco Plus systems, you will first have the backwash. For the IQSoft, the backwash is on zero to prevent that you are going to uh, use more water. So the backwash is on zero for the IQSoft. So you do the brine draw, slow rinse. But afterwards, also for the IQSoft, we do the fast rinse to decrease the time of the regeneration. How is your refill working? So your hard water is entering your system. It's going through your valve. It's going in your tank. It's coming in contact with your resin. Through ion exchange, it's getting softened. It's going to your bottom distributor, going back up to your riser tube. But here, the refill solenoids, the refill solenoids will be activated during the entire refill uh, cycle to make sure that the brine tank will be filled uh, depending on the time that the solenoid will be activated. But the customers still have treated water because the water is not only filling the brine tank, but it's also going to the outlet to the faucet. So here we will see how it's going through your valve. So the water is entering your valve, it's going through your valve, to your top distributor, it's coming in your tank, in contact with your resin, through ion exchange it's getting softened, it's going to your bottom distributor, to your riser tube, it's coming back in your valve. But here the refill solenoid is open and he will start filling the brine tank. How, how are we going to control it? Because I mentioned that the electronic will calculate how much time you have to refill uh, the brine tank. We have a refill flow controller. Because of this refill flow controller, we know that after 60 seconds, one minute, we will put one liter uh, um, of, uh, of water into the brine tank. So this is a flow controller, controller, refill flow controller from one liter per minute. And here the customer also have treated water at the outlet. The brine preparation, how is it working? So the hard water enters the system, it's going through your valve, it's coming into your tank, coming in contact with your resin, through ion exchange it's getting softened, the softened water is going through your riser tube, it's going to the faucet, so the customer still have treated water. This is the same as a service position, the only difference is that the salt is getting dissolved during the brine preparation cycle. So the 
Water is entering your system, your valve is going through your valve to your top distributor, coming in contact with your resin, through iron exchange is getting softened, and your softened water is going to the faucet. The only thing that is happening is the salt is getting dissolved here. Now we are actually going to see what is happening during the regeneration. So we are going to move uh, to change the position of the valve from service to regeneration. I will explain you how we are going to manipulate the, the movement of the diaphragm and the piston. So when you see here, you see that the drain is closed. You see here the diaphragm and the piston. It's skipped into the service position. This chamber and this chamber, P1 and P2, is equal to each other, so it's stabilized and keeps the diaphragm and the, the, the piston into the closed position, into the service position. When we are going to open the drain, we will not be able to stabilize the diaphragm and the piston into the service position. Here P2 will drop because of the drain that is open and the diaphragm and the piston will move into the regeneration position. That's what is how it's happening in, in the valve. What is the first cycle that will happen when we move from service to the regeneration position? We have the brine drum. So the hard water enters the softener. We have the hard water bypass, so untreated water at the outlet. So it's directly going to the outlet. But here now, we have the injector. We are going to create a venturi effect, an under pressure over the injector to be able to have enough under pressure to aspirate the brine preparation out of the brine tank. So because of this under pressure over the injector, we are going to create a vacuum to draw the brine preparation into the system. This brine preparation is going to your riser tube, it's coming in contact with your resin, it's going to reload your resin and all of this brine is going to be washed away to the drain. That's how the brine draw is working. We saw the softening process. This is the brining process. The, it's, the principle is the same. So we have thousands of little balls of resin that looks like this. But now, because we are busy with the regeneration, we will have to reload them. So now they are full of calcium and magnesium. Now we will aspirate the brine preparation full of sodium, dissolved sodium, and we will go over all the resins to exchange the calcium and magnesium for some sodium and the calcium and magnesium will be washed away to the drain and after the regeneration process all the resins will be full, uh, fully loaded again with sodium and then we will be ready to soften again. The brine drum so here we see the water is entering your valve. Normally it goes in this direction, but because the diaphragm and the piston are in the regeneration position, now the water can only go this direction. So this is a hard water bypass. And here it's going, here you have the injector. It's over here. It's going to create the under pressure, the venturi effect, because of the venturi effect it's going to create the under pressure. And because of that under pressure, it will be able to aspirate the brine preparation from your brine tank into your system. This brine preparation will go to your riser tube, into your resin. It will start the brining process through ion exchange. It's going to load your re resin again and all this will be washed away to the drain. So it will come back through your top distributor and be washed away to your drain. That's how uh, it, the flow is going during the brine draw cycle. Then we have the slow rinse. It's, come, it's the same cycle as the brine draw cycle. So the hard water is entering your system, going through the hard water bypass into your valve directly to the outlet. Here, over your injector, we will still, the injector will still create a vacuum effect, a venturi um, to aspirate the brine preparation into your system. But because there is no brine preparation anymore, the air check is closed to prevent that you are going to aspirate air and it's only going 
to do a slow rinse to wash away all the brine preparation that is still in your resin. So here you see the water is entering, hard water bypass, so it is directly going to the outlet. Here is going to create an under pressure over your injector, but because the air check is closed and there is nothing anymore in your brine tank, it will not aspirate any brine and it will simply do a slow rinse. So it will do a slow rinse, the water will come through your top distributor and it will go flow to the drain. So we saw the pre-regeneration when the system is still in service and we have treated water at the outlet. So we saw the refill and we saw the brine preparation. During the regeneration when the system is moving, so when the diaphragm and the piston is moving into the regeneration position, we saw the brine draw cycle and we saw the slow rinse cycle. This is for the eco systems. Now I will explain you the difference with the eco and eco plus system. So the last cycle it will be the backwash or the fast rinse. The backwash will be for um, the Eco Plus system. For IQSoft, the backwash will be set on zero. So what is happening during the backwash? So you have the hard water is entering your system. You have the hard water bypass. So the water is also directly going to the outlet. Here you will have the backwash solenoid that is opening. So the second solenoid on your backup will be activated and will be opened to have a high flow. I will show you on the flow diagram how it's possible to have a higher flow. But because of this high flow, we will be able to lift the resin and to wash away all the impurities. So here the water is entering your system, you have the hard water bypass. Normally the water is going through here, but if you look the injector, the spaces are very, very narrow. So when you are opening the backwash solenoid, the water will always take the easiest way and it will not go through here to this small canal, but it will take the easiest way, this backwash solenoid, and because of this, you will have a higher flow Go through your riser tube, lift your resin and wash away all the impurities to the drain. For the, for the IQSoft, we only use this cycle as a fast rinse, but the principle is the same. So here, hard water bypass, here you will perform a fast rinse and wash all away all the brine and the impurities to the drain. Now we explained everything about the regeneration. So now we are going back from the regeneration back to the idle service position. So we will move the diaphragm and the piston back into the service position. Here the drain is still open. That's why the diaphragm and the piston are still in the regeneration position because P2 is not uh, big enough to keep the, the diaphragm and the piston into the service position. But when we are closing the drain, when the drain is closing, P2 will build up again. It will stabilize the piston and the membrane and it will push it back into the service position. That's how we are moving from service to regeneration. Now I will explain you something. I explained you everything about the flow diagrams. Now I will quickly explain you how the solenoid valves are working so you have an idea when we are activating the solenoid coils, what is happening. So when the solenoid is de-energized, this is a solenoid, this is a plunger with a spring, the membrane. When the solenoid is deactivated, it is in the closed position. So the spring, the plunger are closing the hole in the middle of the membrane and all the little holes around on the membranes are stabilizing both surfaces. This is the closed position. When we are going to energize, when we are going to energize, activate the solenoid, we are going to create a magnetic field. Because of, due to this magnetic field, the plunger will be attracted and will go into the open position. Here, the wa water here will escape through the hole in the middle. 
and the membrane will not be able to stay in the closed position and will go to the open position. That's actually how we are going to open and close a solenoid valve. When we are going to close it again, we are going to de-energize the solenoid coil. So the magnetic field will stop, the plunger will not be attracted anymore. He will close the little hole of the membrane in the middle. And then you have all the little holes on the membrane around it that will build up the pressure again and will let water come here by through all these little holes around it and it will stabilize uh, P1 and P2 and it will press, press um, the membrane back into the closed position. How is the solenoid activity? So during the service position, you never have a solenoid that have to be attracted. When you have the pre-regeneration, during the refill or the brine preparation, during the refill, the refill solenoid, the solenoid on the back, will be activated. When you have the brine preparation, it's the same as the service position, only your salt is getting dissolved. No solenoids are attracted, attracted so no solenoids are attracted at that moment. It's only during the regeneration. When the regeneration is starting, the drain solenoid will always be attracted. So the solenoid will always be attracted during the entire regeneration. That's only always the first thing to check when the customer is calling you, is the, the, the regeneration done correctly? Always check if the gener generation, regeneration is ongoing, that the wa water is coming out of your drain solenoid. Then you have the backwash. Only for the Eco Plus systems, the backwash solenoid will be activated. Also the drain, so both solenoids are activated. During the brine draw and the slow rinse, only the drain is activated. And during the fast rinse, for the Eco Plus systems or for the IQSoft, the backwash solenoid, the second solenoid, will also be activated. The, like I mentioned, it's a very easy valve. It's just moving from the one position to the other, service, idle position, to regeneration position. So very easy valve. You don't have a lot of moving parts, so you don't have a lot of friction. You don't need to do a periodic uh, maintenance. Um, you will see the discs when you are opening, removing the membrane and the piston, you will see the disc. They are friction-free uh, seals. Also the stem body here, you have a self-compressing seal in the middle um, that is important uh, during the brine draw to create enough under pressure. Um, but also this one is a self-compressing seal and um, very reliable. Uh, also the solenoids, like I mentioned, um, it's a plunger with membranes. You will create a magnetic field, attract and open it. It's just moving open and close to the closed position very smoothly, so it's not uh, very aggressive. It's also friction free uh, and it's a proven technology because everybody's using it. You will see it in a lot of, um, of systems in your house. You will see that solenoids are used. Uh, so also for this, um, it's very reliable. Uh, some some uh, other components I would like to explain or give some, some information about. We have the bottom distributor. So we have uh, ARI um, developed actually a, a bottom distributor with an external deflector. Why? Because like I mentioned, water will always take the easiest way. So if your water is entering your riser tube, it will always leave here. As soon as possible, it will leave your, your bottom distributor. But here you will have some, some resin that, it, that is never coming in contact with a lot of water or, or that you will lose some capacity or during the rinse you will not be able to rinse correctly here. That's why Aerie um, developed actually a riser tube with a uh, bottom distributor and an external deflector that is put it in the systems to obligate the water to go completely down to use the entire capacity of your resin and also for the rinse because we saw that the water direction is changing. You don't want the customer to have the first, uh, the, the brine preparation uh, as first in the faucet. So you have to be sure that the, the rinse is done correctly 
and this deflector will make sure that the brine preparation in your entire resin bed will be washed away so the customer will not have a salty taste. We also have the solenoid tool. Um, for the new version of solenoids, we have a tool to easily open and remove the solenoids. The installation summary, so we will quickly go over all the operation conditions, the hydraulic connection from inlet, outlet and the drain, the electronic uh, connection and then how we have to perform a startup of a system. This information can also be found in the technical manual, uh, a lot also in the owner's manual uh, or you can always contact one of our, of our dealers or an account manager to explain you uh, some, some, some of these uh, features. So the operation pressure, um, it's minimum 1.4 bar and maximum 8.3 bar. We advise to use 3 bar, um, around 3 bar. Also our calculations are always based on 3 bar. Um, and we saw that actually the water pressure is important to move your diaphragm and your piston into the regeneration position. So if your pressure is too low, the regeneration will not be done correctly. Um, so therefore the pressure is very important. Operation temperature, it's minimum 2 and maximum 48 degrees. Uh, it's differ different for the H2 Optimo because that's our hot water system. Um, there the, the the temperature is going up to 65 degrees, but the, you have to be careful because the pressure is only, uh, the maximum pressure is limited to 5 bar. So be careful with this. Then you have the electrical uh, connection. We have a transformer, so all our systems have a transformer. It's going to transform uh, the power from 230 to 24 volt. For the older systems, AC. For the newer systems, it's DC. Then we have the installation, uh, the hydraulic connections from the inlet and outlet. We always recommend our customers to measure the pressure uh, to be sure that if you have um, too much pressure, it's very important to put a pressure reducer. If you have not enough pressure that is important for your valve, then you have to put a booster pump to, to guarantee that your system will work correctly. If you see that the customer have a lot of impurities in the water, we also recommend to install a sediment filter. And uh, we also re always recommend to use flexible hoses with a big diameter so that you will not have uh, pressure losses and that the system can easily be moved a little bit to facilitate actually the installation of the system. How is the water flowing through your system if you have a factory bypass? So you have a factory bypass that is included with the IQSoft, with the Softena and the Slimline. The water is coming into your system, going through your system, going to the outlet. You can also close the bypass so that the water will directly go from inlet to outlet. If you are not using the factory bypass, uh, we all always recommend to install a three-way valve um, bypass so that you can always shut down the, 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 the system um, in case you would like to do maintenance or if the customer will, would like to give some water in the garden to the plants or something like this, it's always nice that you can bypass the system. Hydraulic connection for the drain, um, we recommend to use an air trap, a siphon. Uh, also with most of our products, we have the air gap that is, that is included. Why is it? To prevent that actually when you have a blockage uh, somewhere that your water is coming back and it will enter your system to prevent that you will have bacterial growth. And it's also very important that you make two different connections. One connection will be for the overflow and the other one connection will be for the drain. Also, it's important um, that you use reinforced uh, hoses to prevent that you will have pressure loss because you have a kink in uh, your, your uh, hoses. The drain, um, so you have the drain 
from the control, uh, control valve is pressurized so you can go down and you can go up because of the pressure depending on the pressure you can go up with your drain connection but you have to be careful when you connect your uh, overflow and you put it higher than the system the overflow don't have pressure so you can only go down so you have to be careful not to to put the hoses up also for the installation like I mentioned, you have to co connect them separately because of the pressure of the drain. It could be that if you have a T connection, that it will fill your brine tank again. So be careful with the installation. For the electric uh, connection, of course, you have to connect the transformer for your system to work. Um, also, you will see on our system, we have like a little security. It's a twist lock. It's very easy to um, to install it, but it will prevent technicians to go to the customer just to plug in um, the power supply and, and the transformer. So therefore, use a twist lock and you will prevent that when they are cleaning behind the softener that you will have to get a call and have to go and plug in back uh, the, the power lead. Of course, you also have to put the transformer in the electrical socket for your system to work. How do you, will you do the, um, the startup? So the pressurized, you will receive our systems. You will have a lot of air in the system. So you have to open um, the main supply to let the water enter your system. You have to open a faucet nearby to give some time to the system to purge all the air. Also, you will see that there is some color of the water. Just leave the faucet open for a couple of minutes to rinse the resin bed and the color will be gone. Before you put the brine cabinet, before you fill it, before you put the salt, I always advise um, to, to continue the installation. So first, uh, control, uh, install your electronic control panel. Do your change your setting, the language, the hardness, the measured hardness, um, the, the hardness unit that you would like to have, um, the days override. Change it, uh, go through your system. If you want some, some hardness, you will be able to uh, adjust it to the bypass because we, we have a connection. Uh, you can open it here so you can mix some, some residential, uh, residual uh, hardness if you would like. But the most important, important before you put the salt is to perform a manual regeneration. So start a manual regeneration go through every cycle to see if the system is working correctly. So cycle one, you will see the water coming into your brine tank. Cycle two, nothing have to happen. Check the system if there is no leaks. Cycle three, you will see that the water is aspirating. You can disconnect the polytube to feel if there is an under pressure, if the aspiration is done correctly. If you have an Eco Plus system, also check that the backwash that you see that the drain is opening correctly, that the flow during the backwash and the fast rinse is higher. Um, please check all these things before you leave the system to your customer. If the manual regeneration, if every cycle is working correctly, you can put the salt and leave the system for your customer. So this was everything uh, regarding the technical uh, training about the valve. If you would like some information about the software, we have a lot of movies. You can find them uh, on a, in our service manuals. You can also find them on your dealer uh, platform uh, in the brand folder, or you can contact your account manager to ask him for some information. Thank you for your attention. If you have questions, don't hesitate to contact the technical support and see you later.